people, hello. We're back. Let me just double check my mic is the correct mic. It is fantastic. How are we doing? Benjamin hype for the preamble. Love that. Love that. Love it. Thanks, guys. Guys, it's 3.20 a.m. Two of my trains were cancelled. I just got You're into the house. And, well, uh, how, how bad is it when the train gets cancelled? Oh, bad. Really bad, yeah. Bedtime tea. Then, well, then the, the horse and cart person has to come and pick everyone up. Really? Like a little boogie? You guys still have yeah. those, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. You, know, you give him you give him six pence and then you're you're on your way. Now Maddie, when your when your train gets delayed, do you go what well, what's your expletive of choice? Do you go, oh bollocks, rubbish, blast? What do you what's your what's your most British English expletive that is not super like bad? It is not super vulgar. What's your favorite English expletive that Americans don't use really? That is not particularly vulgar that you use often. Well, I, I actually quite like oh bugger, you know. Oh bugger. That's great. Yeah. Although if you actually look at what bugger means, then it's kind of yeah. it's I don't know dark. If it's problematic. Maybe a tiny bit. Anyway. Um do you do you say blast a lot? Blast. Yeah, all the blast. time actually. That's great. That's such a great word. Yeah. It's it's another Ewan McGregor trait that you share. Actually, that wasn't Ewan McGregor. That was more Obi-Wan Kenobi. No. I wonder if I wonder if George Lucas wrote that in or if that was Ewan's doing. I mean, George Lucas being such a skilled writer, I'm sure right. he could take the credit for that. Right. Right. So yeah. uh chat, do you want to see something Seahawks related in the preamble? Should we show them, Griff? Also, I broke my toe. Anyway, go ahead. You did? What? Yeah. I wow. stubbed it. I just stubbed it really bad. I'm like, oh, I broke that sucker. So I got it on buddy tape right now with the other one. They're like this. Okay. What toe? Big toe? Small toe? My left ring toe. Yeah, my left ring toe. Oh, also on my uh, camera, I hate that uh, my whole neighborhood has cameras and everything. Um, because I feel like I'm spying on my neighbors like dog walking habits, which anyway, the it pays which off, you are, but, but you don't want them to know and feel like that either. I get every morning I wake up, I get so excited when there's a motion notification between like midnight and 4 a.m. because I know it's an animal. Right. And this past week, I got a raccoon, I got a lone coyote, so the coyote was probably an outcast, but he was well fed, so I don't think he, I think he or she is successful because a lot of strays go hungry and then um then i saw bobcat which was cool wow um, like really like the coat was like really healthy and like black spots vibrant and everything um so that's always cool that is cool all right here's the right. here's the seahawks thing chat now this is only preamble stuff because uh it's just hearsay now, <laughs> do we have a comment on Bobo Fett, Griff? Um, the, the the person. I mean, he's Lar he's Steve Largent's burner, so we yeah, know that so much about him. Obviously... <laughs> I don't know, Maddie. What you think? What you think about Interesting, that? Interesting, isn't it? Um, now, what I enjoy is this part. Yeah. In that in that case, must be true. Right. I mean, he said, or they said, it's a very reliable source. So, yeah. If they trade up, I mean, it's for a quarterback, right? Yeah. And if they're trading up for quarterback, fair enough. I guess, you know, Schneider's been hankering to do that for a while. And what if, what if they trade up and take like Daniels, though? <laughs> Well, who is, who is, needs to like, the world was normal. He go in the second round where he deserves to for his own sake, and yep. he can be developed. He is not a high floor quarterback, in my opinion. No, well, no, no, I, I I'd agree with that. That being said, they're 
line of thinking might be, you know, Geno Smith, that's the perfect quarterback to develop someone like Daniels behind. But you would really kind of think all of that talk about not forcing guys into areas they don't belong and it being unfair on them, which Schneider said in previous drafts, that would ring a bit more hollow. And then you'd start to wonder whether that was more of a peak thing rather than a, a Schneider thing, which I don't really like all the comparisons which are happening now, but it's inevitable that that does take place. Now, yeah, that <laughs> that would be something. And also it creates a real kind of, I mean, Mike McDonald's under very little pressure right now in terms of six-year contract, just the way free agency's gone and just the way that the contracts are kind of, a lot of them are expiring 2025, that, you know, you, you, the expectation starts to start of a build. As soon as you take a quarterback that high and give up the assets required to go and do that, it really does increase the pressure on him. And if that quarterback were to struggle, then, you know, not only would Schneider perhaps run out of time for getting it wrong, but McDonald would suddenly likely be out the door as well just because you know you've invested that much on a quarterback you've given up those assets he's a defensive coach it just gets tough on defensive coaches in those situations so on the flip side it would be cool because it's it's what schneider's been wanting to do for a while and you know griff did you hear that he liked patrick mahomes did you hear about that supposedly he did supposedly he did yeah word on the street so anyhow that's uh Far too seahawky preamble. <laughs> Be but, very uh, funny. F- fun nonetheless. Right. Chat. We are going to be doing a mock draft tonight. Your opportunity is to tell us which one to use. Now, there's a slight catch. I'm not paying for it. So that leaves us with what options? Pro uh, Griff, what mock draft what? simulator do you use? Oh, do do the uh, Pro Football Network. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that have they updated their board in a while because it's rather friendly. But anyway, Metal Dragon, I see the one you're recommending, and I've noticed that. I think that's just a cop, like literally a cut and paste job. I think that it comes across like that. I'm not, and also the scouting notes are exactly the same as PFNs where, excuse me, it's from PFN and analysts as well. So yeah, I I initially went to that one as well, Metal Dragon, and then I'm now a bit more skeptical of it. Slash Pro Football Network, I think this is the best. Okay, thank you, chat. Griff, any any uh any other stuff we need to cover on the podcast? No, I mean my toes doing podcast. fine. Thanks for asking. Um, doesn't yeah, I that. was I was concerned about that. To be fair, no, I know you were. That's why I brought it back up. Brought it back up. Did you watch um, Iowa, South Carolina? No, I didn't have time. I was doing stuff. You know, but Caitlin Clark, what a player. What a what a what, what a run. Like, holy sh- just It was like, crazy the uh the defense that they played in the um the last period uh was was very um, very impressive really? and she like she'd been hitting everything and then she didn't that was basic. That's my analysis yeah. of the big game. I mean, she she had to have been fatigued. I, I mean, no one else. Oh on yeah, Iowa, exhausted, exhausted. No one, and yeah, yeah. No, no one else in Iowa can like carry like take pressure off her. You know, unfortunately, South Carolina is so deep. Everyone can play. Thirty-eight and O is insanity. Thirty-eight yeah. and O, <laughs> like that's that's insane. Um, like think about how staggeringly unlikely it is to go undefeated for 38 games in any sport where there's that many games played just nuts unreal right and and thank god they're all getting paid now <laughs> like 
It'd be such a shame for all this to take off and then not get paid. At the same time, all the advertisements probably give more revenue in the aggregate to the NCAA just through ratings and everything. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Let's uh let's start this thing. Bang. Hit it, Maddie. Oh. I was a little delayed. That's okay. Yeah, I Next think there's minute. a slight lag. Sorry, what was that? Yeah. <clears throat> toe is okay. fine. The toe <laughs> is fine. Okay, good. Welcome to the Seattle Overload podcast, where we're doing a 2024 NFL mock draft. Yes, it is the season. 8th of April for me. 7th of April for Griff. So if you're listening to this on a kind of next week type of deal something may have happened which changes that now one of those things which may influence our mock draft or probably doesn't is a very obvious seattle need interior offensive line and a development since we were last on air is that veteran free agent guard greg van roten visited the seahawks last week uh, on last wednesday so cool <laughs> um they're also interested in Lakin Tomlinson, Cody Whitehair, basically any veteran guard who I think is going to sign for the right type of money. So not much more to say than that. Griff, I actually thought your tweet on Van Roten was kind of... I, I read it as sarcastic and then yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, you're coping so hard. So, no, I'm coping. I I, um, I mean, he's, he's a solid guard, but I don't know why Risner hasn't been connected to them. I wonder if that's... Prisoners camp not wanting to well, be in the money. The money's too, too, uh, I imagine the money's they're too far apart. Yeah. Yeah. But then I don't know who's going to pay him at this point. No, there must be something more to that. It seems slightly strange. Right. Right. And who knows? Maybe, maybe they do have a, a, um, a meeting scheduled because it was like Greg Van Roten came out like five days later after the white hair and, and Lake and Tomlinson report. Right. So maybe there's just a delay in Risner's next or something, you know, who knows? Mm. The way you said white hair has made it really click for me that it's like he has white hair, you know, what didn't click before. I know. I'm like the co I maybe put emphasis on the Cody. So it's like Cody white hair. Oh, you know, sometimes during um, the old, like the old, the old Pete Carroll press conferences, sometimes he would refer to a player just by like their first name. And wow. I would have no idea who he's talking about because I never thought of that player as just their first name. I either thought of them as their last name or their whole name. So once it was like Robert Turbin and he was like, yeah, with Robert, I'm like, who is he talking about? Like, I didn't hear the question. I'm like, I could not, is there a Robert on this team? And then he said something about running backs like, oh, Robert Turbin. And it just like, yeah, I know his name, first name is Robert, but I never thought of Robert Turbin as Robert. I just thought of him as either Turbin or Robert Turbin. Well, so he also went by name, Turbo, didn't he? He had the, the fun nickname. Right. Well, like occasionally he'll do that with someone. I'm like, who the hell is Pete talking about right now? Because I never really associate them with their first name. And then some players, I only associate them with their first name and not their last name. Anyway, the toe's fine. Let's get back right, on. Like, like, like uh, Gino and DK. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I conflate them for some reason. How many times have I called Gino DK for no know. reason? Hmm. Anyway, mock draft. All right. So we all kind of know what Seattle's needs are. We'll be interweaving that kind of narrative into this mock draft. Uh, we're also going to talk scheme fit, you know, try and talk over the selections. Now, we'll see how many of these we do. I mean, like I said, it, it's kind of late here. So maybe we'll three, four draft until we do it. Um, now, in terms of the rules, look, I'm not a stickler for rules. Are you boring? Are we boring? No. So... 
I think we could take the same player twice if, if we really want to. We'll, we'll work it out. Oh! Check out the chat if you're if you're a fan of the preamble. Very interesting. Thank you, uh, Binary. Thank you, okay. sir. Okay, Griff. Would you like to have a slow draft speed, a normal draft speed, or a fast? How insane are you feeling? Uh, I'm fast. Oh, not very. Now, at 16 on the clock, we have Dallas Turner, edge out of Alabama, Talise Fuaga, offensive tackle out of Oregon State, Quinion Mitchell, cornerback out of Toledo, Amarius Mims, offensive tackle from Georgia, JC Latham, offensive tackle out of Alabama, Johnny Newton, defensive tackle out of Illinois, Byron Murphy, defensive tackle out of Texas, as some of the names are on the board for us. We also have trade offers from the Jacksonville Jaguars, pick 17 and pick 48 for pick 16 and pick 81. And that's I don't think it. that's realistic. I, the, the only thing with this mock is that I don't think the trades are realistic. No, which realistic. is why I always do the trades and then. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I so, do. I mean, especially with this point in the draft, I guess that's a good point to mention, right? At this point in the draft, who would have teams uh, trade up for? So. The, the noteworthy quarterbacks have gone. Williams, Daniels, Drake May, um, and J.J. McCarthy. I, you know, maybe a team's thinking, oh, we need to get Penix, but um, wait, what? Why would, why would, yeah, I've just seen Jacksonville picks at 17 anyway. I don't know why they'd do that. Yeah. So is there a player ordinarily here who's worth sticking out at 16 who wouldn't, you know, be you know an equivalent player after a small trade down i mean if both fuaga and mims being there being there especially mims and latham gosh they're right. really unlikely um and it could be just... that that's why jacksonville wants that kind of crazy one pick trade up because they want to get their pick of the what they view as really quality tackles which they've lasted long let's just secure this dude it's yeah so bulky Right. Um, so, I mean, do we want to stick and pick for the first one, just for the sake okay. of the exercise and so see how? It... Who, who's the pick here? Who's your who? Yeah, who's the pick? Let's go. Let's go, um, Mims. I think he's the best player on the board, and we're gonna now, we're gonna move him to guard. Now, well, now what? Why? Okay, okay. Let's uh, let's unpack. Let's unpack that. First of all, okay. First of all, why why is he the the best player on the board? Uh, I mean, he's some people's like number two tackle. So right. I mean, he shouldn't be here. I, I feel like for realism, <laughs> we should take Fuaga. Oh, too late. Um, that's fine. So Mims, it can be the placeholder for Fuaga. I mean, it's the same concept, right? Fine. Boom. But you, you really like Mims. Isn't that really the thing with him is he um he hasn't started like he hasn't played much football, right? Like if he'd played more football, he'd be a top five pick potentially. Um he has eight college starts, so Yeah. But yeah. he's you know, he's six for eight. Are you really playing a six for eight player at guard? Like how is the run blocking aspect right. of that all gonna work? Right. I, I can only think of Alex Boone, who's been that tall. Oh, good play guard. Like he he's pretty good at run blocking a tackle. It's just the the kind of guard stuff, right? So just, would it almost yeah. be a question of maybe you? I mean, it becomes a lot of moving parts. But would you put Mims as the right tackle, Lucas as the right guard? Um. I would, oh man, I mean, maybe they try, they try Lucas at guard, but I think he <laughs> has to play tackle. I just think Mims is so talented, he can make it work. Okay. Okay. Great. Hey, Hooch Sniper, you leave that out, okay? You're not, you don't have the power to fire us. And also, Hooch Sniper, you know what? 
I could time no. you out here. Don't don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, I won't do it. All right. So we're now at pick eighty one. So we've taken uh, Amarius Mims out of Georgia. Now, do any of these trade down offers interest us? No. And I think once you haven't traded down from 16, if anything, trading yeah. up from 81 might be the move. Just not miss out on guys because, for instance, uh, getting a linebacker is going to be tough in terms of that Mike-type linebacker that Seattle needs right now. Um, Junior Colson went in the second round, pick 49. Yeah. We're now at pick 81. Cedric Gray just went. Um, so... Yeah, so we're thinking probably best player available at linebacker or safety at this point. Who, who's left? Who's left at linebacker and safety? <laughs> it's a bit early for Jalen Ford in it's terms really... of where they've got him slotted, but also I think from from what we watched of him, he's an intriguing kind of fourth round pick, isn't he? Third yes. round feels rich. Now fourth round of... feels good for him. Yeah. yeah, so maybe in a, a future one we'll do that. Now, in terms of safety, Javon Bullard out of uh, Georgia, Kalen Bullock out of USC. Um, I mean, Bullard makes the most sense. Um, the only thing I think with him is that he's 5'10", 5'11". He has a good density. He, was, he tested really well. But if we look at the guys that Baltimore invested heavily in at safety under McDonald. You've got Marcus Williams, who they signed off for in free agency, seventy yep. million dollar deal. Really he's six smart one. kind of veteran, right? Right. He's six one, long arms, two ten, and then Kyle Hamilton is like nearly six four, two fifteen, and thirty four inch arms. Right. So I don't know if if they're going to spend. Well, granted, pick eighty one isn't that high, but if they're going to spend like a high pick on a safety, I wonder would they prefer. Like, I guess really more because some people are talking about Bullard as like a fringe first. I think he's a firm second rounder. I don't think he'll be here in reality. So the question with him is really more so when, if given the choice between Bullard and Newbin and maybe Kinchins, who would he go? And I would think Newbin just because of the height and length. But at 81, I think he'd take Bullard all day. But then real real quick, who's at a, who's at defensive line? Well, this, this is the standout thing now. We are going to have, I know initially this uh, podcast was titled Big End Episode. We're going to have the Big End Episode and explain why that's important. But right up here on defensive line at 67 overall per the PFN rankings is uh, Braden Fisk, who we've spoke about before from FSU, defensive tackle. The risk is probably too great for Seattle where their roster's positioned. Not to rhyme that with Fisk, my apologies. No, but then an good. interesting name. Brandon Dawless out of Oregon. And he's yeah. someone who we will be covering in the Big Edge episode, but I happened to watch a bit of him. I mean, the what, athleticism what, is very obvious. What, what what did you end up thinking of his um of his run defense? Because I know you commented on I that. I don't too. know what was going on in in the uh <laughs> I don't know what was going on. He was really bad. But really the senior what, what ball. game did you watch? Uh, oh. the senior ball. See, I think some of these guys just check out. Well, yeah, so that's the thing. Like, when it was clear pass or he knew he, or his one on ones, he was dominating, like, speed to power, like, disgusting bull rush, um, and, and really good timing. But when it was the run, he was like, he wasn't, he wasn't checked out. He was just, like, really late to stuff. And it, you just wonder how much. But then, you know, you, you kind of note that down. And, um, I mean, what did you think from his Oregon tape? Um, I mean, the pass rush is is solid. It's second round pass rush tape. He's a bull rusher and he can get off blocks well. He can counter and everything off of the bull rush, but it's all power based. Like you know, he's not a speed rusher, even though he's on the lighter side. But the the strength out of his stance is like real. He can move guys right out of his stance. He doesn't even need to build up momentum. Um, as a run defender, I just thought he was a stout run defender and could get off blocks as well. And he was active at the line. Combos that stay on him. I mean. He plays a little high, and he's 290. He's going to get moved. But in a scheme where it's a sound scheme, I mean, I think he can be – I think he can play five, four, four, I, and three. But he's not the, the the type of big end where he can really function as a true edge. It's getting to the point where he's a little bit bigger than that. So it's more so he can play edge for, for run defense purposes. 
But like, if you put him out on the edge, you're not expecting anything of real rush there. I do think though, with Darius Robinson, who I did end up watching today, I think he can actually rush the passer from everywhere. Yeah, a little bit like the the key on white theory. Different players, yeah. same theory. Yep, yep. I I actually kind of preferred what I saw from um, from Darius Robinson to uh, and is is he why is he not showing up? I guess he's been picked, and that's why it doesn't show up on here. Uh, I think he's projected to go a bit higher anyway, right? But yeah, yeah, I pre- I preferred what I saw from his his uh, senior ball stuff as well. To kind of to that point, Griff, and I I actually just think I do worry about Dawless, like when it when it's like sticking on a, a a wide zone type guard or even tackle, just lateral movement at the line. I think mm. uh, I do I have concerns about that, and I mean to that point, if you if you want to get all athletic testing about it. 1.68 second 10 yard split at 283 pounds mighty impressive right but a 485 second short shuttle that's kind of hinting at i think similar stuff to what i was seeing in terms of that kind of lateral agility kind of a stiff dude so well i guess i've taught myself out of that but then if not him should we go with bullard now let's go bullard yeah now so are you viewing him as the high safety? So he's he's not a like for like, but he's more of a Quandre Diggs replacement. Obviously, George's defense does a lot of stuff. He can truly do he can truly do it all. Like it, he can absolutely do the dig stuff. Um he's maybe not as natural with it because they don't play enough like cover two half to you know, like really see. You're more you're more trans projecting the the cover two shell when he's playing deep. Like, yeah, he's fine. Like, he, I don't think there are enough examples for him to, like, really flex, like, pure raw range. But he does his stuff well. He's really explosive playing a quarter. And that's that's one way to win me over and when watching safeties. Like, oh, if, I you know can, it. if you can nail down on a dig route and if you're always in position on the crossers, like, you are letting the scheme function. Like, you have high-quality functionality. And then he comes down on the box. So he sometimes will play – where it's like a, a wing formation. He has to be an edge setter and he will just ruin tight ends day. Like he's really, he's, he's really like just physically sound, really um, technically sound. Um, yeah. He can all, he, like he can, he can, um, he can post on a, a reaching tight end and keep his outside half available for like a stretch play and string it out himself, just in complete control to play the whole time. Um, he's a really good football player. I just think that Newbin is also those things, maybe not quite as first step explosive, not quite as fast um, downfield, but is a little bit bigger. And Griff, uh, can you, where is Newbin from? What's his school, please? Minnesota. What's his first name? Tyler Newbin, Minnesota. He's 6'2, 210. He did not test well, but I don't think he actually, I don't think he tested bad for his play style and how he would be used. Kyle Hamilton didn't test great either. People forget. Uh, Anyway, so I would go Bullard here and then well, we took him. Okay, cool. Griff, any concerns over the fact that we have two players out of uh, the University of Georgia? I mean, you can't go wrong drafting Georgia. They're the best program in the country right now. There you go. Uh, uh, some of the chat clamoring for Braden Fisk. Uh, I guess we can talk about him now. Like, Well, we, we did talk about him last time, right? We already talked about him. Basically, he's, he's very athletic. Obviously, that shows up, but he has one move. He has really short arms, and it's a kind of risky projection. And uh, stiff. And yeah, stiff. But going in, okay. in, in, you know, vertically linear, he's pretty impressive. But and All Corey right. in the chat saying this is really showing how much the gap between six and eighty-one sucks to wait out. Hooch Snipe saying, "I love this as an exercise, but if this happens, we're truly buggered." Oh dear! Blast my toe right so i don't think there's any point in trading down from 102 even though we have an offer so yeah I, I would that. Understand, Pat. okay well um who's 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 the best defensive tackle left if you were to sort by dt well they're they're saying it's Mason Smith out of LSU. So I might have screwed us up here because he needs to be like a fourth rounder, fifth rounder. 
Oh, we are in the fourth round. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> it's my toe. Sorry. Um, uh, oh, Makai Wingo dropping. I would take Wingo in a heartbeat here. Oh, have yeah, you, yeah, 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 yeah. So, you're not concerned about Wingo being a shorter type of guy and you're going to play him as a three tech griff? Yeah, three technique who can really hold the point for it. I mean, you saw that he used 285, but like he's a high density, he's six foot, so. He's really explosive and really strong. All right, now, Maddie, what are you doing here? I mean, it almost feels perfect. Yeah, this is this is nice. We we watched some Jalen Ford. Now, I, um, yeah, no, I mean the the this part of the fourth round. So this is pick one eighteen for Seattle. This is about right for him. He's uh, he didn't get me massively excited, but I think he's just a solid player who. You know, you don't know what the NFL type of development could do for him. It's also a fourth round pick. Like it's fourth yeah, round is where some... I would live with the results, whatever happens. Right. right. And what and what we got excited about, both of us, was hit what he showed in coverage was kind of the the controlled shuffling and feeling of roots behind him that you know, there's glimpses of glimpses of it that just don't exist on some of the other guys' tape and it's stuff that in the NFL, there'll be uh, more examples of that happening. Along with he can play downhill, he can sniff out plays. He's got good play diagnosis, I think, and he he can make a tackle. So it's it's a a middle linebacker who you, you feel can at least push Tyrell Dodson and not just hand him that. And yeah, he ran in a, a four six like low four six is forty time at his pro day, but. You know, you know who else ran a four six though. <laughs> don't say Fred Warner. No, well he did, but I don't know how that happened. I was going to say um, C.J. Mosley, <sighs> and there's similar movement skills, I think. And Mosley plays fast, functionally fast. I don't, yeah, I don't think I Ford didn't notice. Slow. I didn't notice Ford's speed being an issue, to be honest. Yeah, it's more like. When he's either late to things or yeah, his his ability to recover is obviously lessened, but he's not slow. He's just not like a first round pick flying sideline to sideline. So. Right. Yeah. Okay, okay. so Jalen Ford. <laughs> this is interesting. Do you want to, I mean, Christian Boyd is a good run defending nose tackle who has a bull rush. Um, You've Xavier watched Thomas, Northern Iowa tape? Uh, YouTube. I didn't, I didn't get Northern Iowa tape. Yeah, but kidding. Northern Iowa YouTube? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're, you're in deep. G Gabe Hall is interesting. He's not a good run defender. He actually can rush the passer a little bit, but he's too... He's too unsound, and I think there are too many analogs on the roster for him. Okay. Christian Boyd, Christian Boyd makes sense because he, you know, the, if they have a hole right now in this moment, like next year, it would be nose tackle. So, yep. but then they've they've also you know taken we've we've, we've already taken Mackay Wingo, right? You've got Leonard Williams, you've got Jaron Reed, you've got. Cam Young, who's supposed to be developing, and I guess they view him as a no slash three. Right. So, Maddie, are, are you thinking what I'm thinking here? <laughs> Given what we said? Who is it? Oh, I want to see if we're reading each other's mind. Who would you think I'm talking about right now? Um, Your big toe? It's my ring toe, not my big toe. And my oh, toe is fine. Thank sorry. you. Thank you oh, for okay. asking. I'm very concerned yeah, uh, about it. Of of the names up above, though, on the on the screen. Of, of the names on the defense screen. On the screen right now in front of you. I who, don't want to take another defense player. I'm kind of sick of them. Okay, but if you had right, to, who are you thinking here? Come on. No, no, no. Who do you think I'm thinking that you're thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Stop Come playing on. games with me. This is bad. The pick has to be handed the, in. The, the the Notre Dame linebacker. Oh, you're going to take yeah. two linebackers. So, I mean, so this is this guy, uh, Maurice Liafu, Leaf 
Fao? I think Lufay? it's Lufeo. 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 My apologies. I'm probably Lufeo. wrong. By the this way, it guy, is group, right? Group at the Senior Bowl, do you, I watched Senior Bowl Indies, right? The positional inside linebacker drills and the guy with the gold helmet, uh, which was Maurice. I was like, this guy, this, I was raving to Griffin in the chat. I was like, look, the gold helmet guy might actually be a linebacker. Like, we, we've got, we've got to take, take a look at him. We've got to take a look at Maurice because technically he's really sound. His feet are really good. He's not crossing over. He's very controlled in his shuffle. His zone drops are excellent. He's looking really nice. And then I watched him run. And uh, <laughs> he um, he um, can't move. But he's a solid player. And he's very well coached. It's like a solid floor pick. Just, you know, the ceiling is never going to be great. That being said, Griff, would you do this here over... You could get Theo Johnson out of Penn State, who's like a crazy type of tight end. I think he's more in the move mold still, especially yeah. early in the league. So, like, how are you actually going to get him snaps? I know... Um, Eric All out of uh, Iowa is... Um, I thought he was Eric Ali. I guess he's Eric All. Um, oh, I'm just reading that wrong. Anyway, I know he's he's got some promising stuff, but he's just got injury um, prone record. Like Tip Ryman, is that a bit yeah. early? I know he's the like the hype beast type name because he's so big and he's has got all these blocking reps and he's such I'm an athletic it. tester. Yeah, um, I don't know. Who do you think between? I think it makes sense. They have to draft a tight end. They have to put bodies on the roster. They only have two right now, maybe three. Well, they technically have four with between Mabry and that Grayson guy that. They but I don't think that they're real factors. Um, what do you think between Theo and Tib? What would you do? What does your gut say to do? I would take Tip. Okay. That could be so wrong, though. Why? But the great thing about this is the great thing about draft season is no one remembers. Yeah, but Griff, are you sure you don't want to take Maurice? Um, I would go. I would go tight end. They're probably okay at linebacker. <laughs> what? Okay, though. Did you not hear they, they lost Jordan Brooks? They they need to. No, I didn't. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. I hope his toe is okay. Mine's fine. Um, we, we, they need to go offense. We, we like you said, we have too many defensive picks, so. Is that how the is that how drafting works? Yeah. Hmm. So. Yeah. You said tip. You know what would be a you? really Schneider pick? Just taking like an SEC uh, guard out of LSU slash center. Anyway. Um. Okay. So we're taking tip. Have you watched tip or Theo? Nope. Good. We're combine scouting, baby. Yep. Okay. Um, really, that's kind of what day three, especially with the the senior uh, classes being kind of diminished, NIL, COVID years, all of that type of stuff. Uh, you know, the draft's kind of over by the fourth round, and then it's sort of due to uh, like athletic flies in the fifth, and, the, and then really the, the sixth and seventh become like uh, priority free agents, basically. So important to keep in mind which um right. by the way schneider spoke about how uh they they changed their kind of strategy in the seventh round where they go kind of more on um need right they they right. really start forcing need to get the needed free agents in all right mm -hmm. so pick 192 in the sixth round do they is there a special team wide receiver? Is there a corner, a developmental corner? Anya Smith is kind of interesting that he's still there. Any of these corners hey. strike a chord sorry, with you? Sorry, sorry, sorry. What do you like about Anya Smith? Um, I think that he's like a real player. He's a guy that has fallen a little bit. Um, like I would have thought of him as maybe a fourth, fifth rounder. So he's just a name that pops out. 
Um, Anthony Gold is very productive, but incredibly small out of Oregon State, but he's he makes plays. Um, <laughs> we, uh, yeah, I guess what the Titans last did here. Christian Boyd's still there. But what about the corners? Do any of them do anything for you at this point? You know, with corners, it sucks because I, I, all I used to have to do is look at 32-inch length arm guys and then guys who were patient or hadn't played any press but played with physicality. See, so, yeah, I think... I think that they they have the same Baltimore is the same corner philosophy though. Very similar, as as evidenced with um you know the Nigel Warrior pickup and, I mean, and, uh, and Carl Scott stream Seattle even though he wasn't the biggest. I mean, he's right. kind of big. What was that? And then, and then of course Carl Scott staying kind of kind of hints more at that that like they want continuity at corner. Yeah, there's real you carryover, know. right? Yeah. So. What do you? I don't know. Do any of these corners? If I mean, you just I haven't want... watched Fresno State, Tulane, South Dakota uh, corners. Yeah, then take <laughs> Jarius Monroe for the hell of okay. it. Okay, tell tell me about him, Griff. He's six foot, two hundred pounds. <laughs> wow, that's uh, that's cool. That's like above five foot eleven. Mm -hmm. I wonder, I'm curious, who's left at linebacker at this stage? <laughs> Muaseo is semi-interesting. Oh, Jordan McGee, you got to go McGee. That's like a yeah, no-brainer. I do. That's a no-brainer. Well, just to, is that just an athletic pick? Yeah. Well, no, he can play. He, I mean, he's like my fifth linebacker or something. Really? Yeah. What so what do you like about Jordan McGee out of Temple, who we just picked in the seventh round? He he's two twenty-eight and he can actually take on blocks and get off of them. Okay. And then he can he can drift drop like in the in his hook, like he can drift back under bend back underneath in breakers. He knows when they're coming. Um he can turn and run with guys all day long. Um and he gets his head around, he looks for things coming across the other side of the field when his initial threats are eliminated. Like he's trying to cycle to the next thing, like provide hook or curl overlap, you know. I mean, he's out there playing football. I'm not saying he does any of those things to an elite degree, except maybe match guys. Like he actually can. Like I think you could put him with a problem receiver or a problem tight end. Um, and in Temple, they scheme, their scheme actually lets you eval the linebackers. I did not want to like him because I just wanted to be done with my li linebacker evals. He was like one of the three last guys I watched. And he, I was like, oh man, because in my mind, I'm like, I got the linebackers all, you know, like hammered out. Like, how do I fit this guy in? And I, as I kept watching, I'm like, well, he's actually kind of better than this guy. He's better than that guy. So in my mind anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I've, uh, I'm kind of a Jordan McGee guy. The thing is, I think he's a will. And they're, they seem pretty steadfast about, Baker being a little, but we're talking about a seventh round pick, you know? Well, yeah, and you need some depth, like the, the neglect of the linebacker position over the years is, uh, well, I shouldn't say over the years like that. That's just uh, too strong. But the lack of drafting of a linebacker or a developmental project, uh, yeah, you could do with like a bit more of a fun depth. And yeah, seventh round pick, right? Yeah. So, chat, how do we, uh, how do we feel about that? Not, Conventional, you could say. Although yeah. some familiar names. If, 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 you, if you pretend Mims is your favorite tackle to guard convert project, how do you view this? I yeah, think I'd the, give it like the a... The thing is, though, that's a lot of pretending for me, just because of his height. Yeah, well, just pretend he's Fatanu then, because I think th this simulator <laughs> board was weird. Oh, yeah, Blame, blaming it on the simulator. Yeah, I give this a B. A B. Yeah. Okay. Should we have one more? One more shot at it. Yeah, and this will be a little more expedient. 
What yeah, grade did you give that draft, though? Uh, I gave that a, uh, a C. Uh, well, actually, I don't grade on that type of scale. Oh. I grade on the, are you familiar with this, one out of ten scale? Sure. So I'd give that like a four. Really? You weren't a fan? Yeah, like four being, like, I grade one high, ten low. Oh. It's like an NFL thing, so, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'd give it like a four. Yeah. Okay. All right, we ready? Yep. Okay. So we want to trade back in this one, right? Yeah, we, we can try. Now, how fleecy do we want to get? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> okay, so we're in the next draft, and Atlanta has offered us pick 43, no, no, pick no, 74, no. pick 79, pick 109, and a future second. If no. we weren't doing a mock draft... Future picks is a could be a thing. It's interesting just seeing around the league how now I'm completely blanking on the two teams have done it, but the kind of future assets becoming a thing is a thing. Like like teams seem to be more into the future assets idea. Like well, what the Houston Texans gave up for uh, Stefan Diggs. Sorry, I did, um let my dogs. Let two dogs out and let one Are they dog excited out. by the mock? I think they're a little ticked off by it. That's why they left. Okay, so that's a nice offer. So yeah, we've been offered pick twenty six and pick forty six by the Colts. I don't feel like that's realistic, but I think it would be oh realistic. Oh my gosh, who cares? If, if Seattle included like one of their fourth round picks, so can you can you counter and include? Because that doesn't happen in real life. You don't think? No. But, but if what you... if they really like Brock Bowers? That's really interesting, isn't it? No, he's not dropping. We, we can't think like that. But we're saying we're trading back anyway. <laughs> why, why, why must you make me counter? Because it would be more realistic if we did something that was more realistic. Oh, so we're doing realism? Yeah. Click okay. the counter button. <laughs> well, well, I just want to let's let's get into the draft value, okay? So pick sixteen is worth a thousand, right? Pick twenty six okay. is worth seven hundred, okay? Yeah. And then pick forty six is worth four hundred and forty. So they've given us a bit extra. Right. Per my math. So, okay, we can give them a fourth round pick for your realism. Thank you. Chat, are you unhappy with this? Griff is purposefully, this is how honorable and realistic he is. It's about integrity. He's purposefully ruining everything. Um, Misfit asked to see the other trade offer. Oh no, now I'm going to break it, aren't I? This was the other trade offer. Yeah, I don't think I would take that. Yeah, so. Charges offering 37, 69, 105, and a future second for pick 16, pick 235. All right, Griff. You happy? Chat, you know who to blame here. So we're offering them 118, okay? Let's, that, yeah, let's do 118. Yep, let's do 118. So they took Brock Bowers. So that's who they traded up for, the Colts. So now we're at pick 26. No. And uh, I've seen some interesting names on the board here, so I think we're going to pass up Cleveland's off with pick 54, pick 85, future second, future third, future sixth. So, okay. at pick 26, we have Byron Murphy, the second on the board, Cooper DeGene out of Iowa, Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon, the center, and then Tyler Guyton, offensive tackle, Oklahoma, and uh, Michael Penix Jr. is still as well, the quarterback, who a lot of people now have in the first round, which, good luck. Or you could do, Griff, Tyler Newbin out of Minnesota, who I know you feel positive about. So, have you watched Dejean? I keep wanting to say Dejean. <laughs> it's Dejean. It should be, uh, yeah, you just have to read the Iowa part, and then... Uh, 
Yeah, it's the gene. So, so Maddie, we have a white corner on our hands. What do we do? Does that mean he's a safety, or can he actually play corner? I think he can play corner. And I think he's an actual corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of crazy the narrative around uh, around him, right? I don't understand yeah. it. It's, and and all the stuff which gets like um like people saying he can't play man. What? He's quite good in man. Yeah, I don't. Anyway. And it's not like uh, – so you see, the, the thing with stereotypes and white players, it's like – even though, like, it's like jokes, right? Like, you can make fun of white players. But if you're going to stereotype white players, you're making insinuations about non-white players. So it's not, like, to the detriment of Cooper. But it's, yeah, it hurts it's still, everyone. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, the, the conversation with him about moving him is really more like, what about him mixing in a big nickel? That's where I'm intrigued by because yeah. he can tackle and like the zone stuff at corner when they're in cover three and quarters can translate to big right. nickel. And he's Devin quite a physical Wh- player. Right. So Devin Witherspoon, as we know, ended up being a good zone nickel as well as a man nickel when he had nothing in college that indicated he would. Just not there's nothing that indicated he couldn't, but nothing that indicated he'd be able to handle it. It's a completely different world. With Cooper, there's a little bit more there with Devin, and they're just such good football players. I think they could figure it out. So the, the what's intriguing about that to me is you'll never not have a stud player playing nickel and never not have a stud player playing left corner. The drawback of playing Devin inside is that he's not playing left corner. The drawback of him playing left corner is that he's not playing big nickel. So you could intermix him and Dijon inside yeah. and outside according to your matchups, and that could be really intriguing. I don't know if that's the optimal thing to do at 26 with your first pick, but I think they'll think about it. Yeah. Um, you know what scares me about this? And it's not his fault, but I was like, I was scheduled, like the, the receivers I've seen him against. Like, yeah. again, I would like more tape, but like Western Michigan. Penn State, I guess they have some guys, and uh, Michigan State, but they, they just played crap offenses. Yeah. Um. Like there's no what? like, and and that's that's true for a lot of. That's partly why what makes um assessing we, corners in college yeah. really really difficult. Right. But, um. Because no one's you know, breaking. It'd be us. nice if he'd been at the senior bowl or something. Right. Which obviously, he's a junior, so. Because because you're not getting tape against him breaking square digs or like blaze outs. Right, stuff like right. that. Really. Like, how does he? At least in the Mac, there's speed, though, right? Even if there's a route running, there's still speed. Yeah. But anyway. Um, yeah, in yeah in the uh, yeah you do have some speed and you have some spread stuff and um, yeah. Anyway, I, and what we haven't also mentioned is along with the fact that he can play along with Spoon and um, Woolen, if Woolen kind of gets it into. Uh, kind of finishes off in the third year. But also, Dejean can can be a return specialist for them. And he's a really interesting returner. So let's let's do that, Griff. I like that. All right, we're doing Dejean? Yeah. All right, so now pick 46, which is the pick we uh, acquired from whatever team we traded down with. So... We're going to stick here. Wow. <laughs> That's, um, that seems slightly unusual, Griff. Murphy is still like, what, what, what the hell is going on here? What's going um, on? Hold up. Well, if Byron Murphy were to fall this far in the draft, I would be slightly shocked and I would be wondering what's going on. I'd be asking the scouts. So know, for the sake of this exercise, I would not go Murphy because that's just not realistic. I would think about either. Oh, Lynn. isn't it? <laughs> I would think about if we're going defense first, I would think about guard next. So Cooper BB jumps to mind right away. Mm-hmm. What do you like about Cooper BB? I think he's a complete player. Um, I mean, he can block and he can protect. 
Um, he definitely fits the scheme. He can cover set as a guard. He doesn't half set or like three quarter set. He tries to cover up the rusher completely. That's something that um, Coach Paul Alexander talks about a lot, and that's yep. also how like Jim McNally coaches it. That they want you yep. to like near the guy, and he has the feet to do that. And he doesn't Foot give fire. up the outside foot fire and then don't give up like your your outside half via like a he's not over aggressive with his long long arm like um stab moves so he's just a good guard um he can really move guys in the ground game and he has an anchor he has an actual anchor um so like i like damian lewis coming out of lsu i like cooper like much more just to give context so i mean i would take bb here and I think him in the second round would be a great, a great get. Okay, Griff, you've sold me, and we will be having an interior offensive lineman episode where BB's going to be featured. Where we'll look at the tape as well, get some guard tape. All right, so we've picked uh, Cooper DeGene and then uh, Cooper BB. Great name so far. <laughs> okay, so now, now, what do you want to do in the third round? Pick eighty-one. McMillan's a little enticing, but they can't invest at receiver right there. No, Jalen McMillan, Washington receiver, who obviously Ryan Grubb has familiarity with. Mm -hmm. He's also too like, well, he's not the same, is he? But he's got a lot of similarities to Seattle's current receiving group. Yeah. Who do you, who's that linebacker? I have a feeling we're going to be disappointing given Jeremiah Trotter went, uh, Three picks earlier to Ken Norton Jr.'s linebacker group in Washington. Don't do it, Ken. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> the they've made well, now that's that, not that realistic. Is, that's semi-realistic. I mean, he's well, going to be not realistic. <laughs> no, no, chat. We can't. We can't do that. That's it's not realistic. realistic to me. Damn it. Oh, okay. So what I was saying that for the audio listener is that Junior Colson has fallen below Jeremiah Trotter to pick 81 in the third round. All right, so Maddie, if let's pretend Junior isn't here. How would you feel about Trevin Wallace at 81? Uh, in the middle of the third like, round. It would be a bit... Um, I'd be like, that's cool because they've clearly uh, talked to the guy and really like how they can coach him up. I mean, I don't think, I just think he needs to intensify everything. I think he checks off boxes, but not that well. And Yeah, he's and, so inconsistent, which is stuff like, like you know, you, you would think maybe coaching wise, you could, you could coach up. He's the type of player as a coach, you're like, I can fix him. I can get him good. Yeah. He runs a four five one and it's two thirty seven pounds. And when the flashes happen, it's like wow. He he also is a Mike archetype. And yeah, like he was a really frustrating watch for me. Um like I like Jalen Ford in the fourth more than I like Trevin Wallace in the third. I do think strictly speaking. Really? Yeah. <sighs> I just think Ford has flex flexibility in his movements. I think he has natural change of direction. Yeah, whereas Wallace is Wallace well, is pretty linear, right? Here, here, here's what I would say about them. Jalen Ford is, I think that he is aggressive and reactive. So when he's right, he's right early. When he's wrong, he's wrong early. Whereas Wallace, everything is like a tick behind. So he's often right. Like he demonstrates that he knows, how, like, this is how I should relate to the pattern. But he does it so late that it's like, why aren't you playing with more urgency is really how I view that. So, And then I think they're both like good athletes. So the coaching staff to me is I'm thinking like Jalen Ford wants to do heady things. He wants to do like, let me be ahead of the play. And if you can coach him to where he can be more consistent with that, then he can be a potentially a high impact player. I mean, I really view him like junior, like junior Colson last year. More than with Wallace, it's there's a foundation to his play, but can we get him like playing faster? And I don't mean like speed, but like processing or just realizing he needs mm. to get to a spot quicker. And he is a he is a junior. I just think it's the way, like e even in the senior bowl stuff. Like, and again, I'm observing from afar. It's just my observation. Like, I, I'm not privy to inside stuff, but 
watching him through the drills, there's a few things where he's slower to get it than the rest of his position group. And it just might be kind of understanding how his, uh, you know, what type of learner he is and just getting to know him a bit better. But, you know, the stuff from Kentucky and then in the senior bowl as well, where he's just completely lost at times through just not having the right key, not seeing the right thing, completely misreading it is scary. Uh, and, and then even at the combine, you saw how, you know, he was a bit late to line up at times. In, in he, the drill, he, so. he has a rep where he has a final three match on tape. And it's like, he knows he needs to do, do it. Like, you know that he knows he needs to, because he has the formation and everything. And he recognizes it post snap, but he just opens to it late. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, it's almost we know like he didn't fully understand the purpose of it. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, it's strange, but there's a lot of like, oh, he shows that he knows what to do here. When you take Trotter, for example, who doesn't ever demonstrate that, okay, Wallace is showing that he knows what he needs to do, but why isn't he doing it earlier? Like, there's just so much of that. Whereas the other guys aren't even checking off the first box of like they're not showing. Jalen Ford, he demonstrates what he needs to do, but he's not always correct. But then when he is correct, it looks really good. When he's incorrect, it looks really bad because mm. he's giving up a completion over the middle. It's just it's a weird balance. But and as Monjombo points out in the chat, uh Trevor Morris did only turn twenty one two months ago. He's a true junior. Yeah. He's not like um Ford, who's a senior. Um right. And Monjombo right. also saying that Wallace lasting until the fourth round is very unlikely given Dayon Henley went in the third last year. That's right. I think there's more kind of third, fourth round linebackers in this draft. There's just the lack of the top guy. Right. I'm not saying there was a top guy last year. I don't actually remember one. Who? I guess it was... Uh, was it the Clemson guy last year? Was that Simpson? Wasn't, yeah, was it Simpson last year or was he the year yeah. before? Yeah, anyway. and he got drafted to the Ravens, I think, yeah. right? which is kind of... So maybe we should say Colson's unrealistic and maybe we should take Wallace because that, in terms of what like they what they did with Simpson and how they could use Wallace and work him into like, hey, let's let's work you in on a package where you're allowed to rush a bit. I think that that could translate. Could be. Now we we can use Simpson as a little bit of a guide in that he's 6'2", 235, 32 inch arms. Now he did run a four four, but four four speed isn't in this draft. But he is six two, thirty two inch arms. So maybe that's maybe that's a threshold that we need to think about. Right, right. Uh, and yeah, what that's the other thing with Wallace, just the fact he's six one, two thirty seven with thirty two and five eighth of an inch long arms, like I don't you know, that, that type of size isn't um and I know Ford has it, but the rest of the class is either quite short armed or or slow, you know. Right. Right. Should we take Wallace? Let's do Wallace, yeah. But that's interesting that discussion because it's um it's come out to me that you've uh you, that you're kind of preferring um okay, would you do that? That's not really yeah. a stick, you're gonna say. I probably would, yeah. But who's trading up that that late in the process? No, okay, fine. Right. You know, have have we taken a DT yet? We haven't, have we? No. I feel like probably try to go DT, but you know who I like a lot is Jonah Ellis. Okay. He's got, I mean, the get off is real. He's got Ben, he has hands. He's not going to bull rush you, but like, I like him more than, say, Chris Braswell. Um, and this is fourth round pick 102. You'd take Jonah Ellis out of Utah. I wouldn't be against it. What do you think, though? What about other positions? Um, well, in, in terms of this, again, it's not, um, not by any means set in stone, the, these rankings, but it's, saying that would be early for for Ellis. In, I mean, you could take, could, could get your quarterback here, Griff. That is interesting, isn't it? 
But remember, they're trading DK for for. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Drake yeah, this is... Okay. What 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 did we what have we taken so far? Uh, Cooper BB. So how much better is Cooper BB compared to Dominic Pooney, Griff? I think he's more complete. Because why I asked that chat is uh, Dominic Pooney still available in the fourth round right now out of uh, Kansas, whereas BB from Kansas State we took a pick forty six, which we netted in a trade back. I feel like BB can be a pro bowler. So okay, cool. Well, let's take Spencer Rattler, Griff. You like Spencer Rattler. Yeah, but we got more needs, more pressing needs. <laughs> Don't we? Yeah, we kind of do. We, our team. We, we the Seahawks. You want to double decision. up a guard with Pooney? No. Well, if you want to, go for it, man. No, I don't like. What about Delmar Glaze? Never. I've never heard of that man in my life. You haven't heard of Mr. Glaze? I have not. Okay. I wish him well, though. Have <laughs> you? Good. That'd be messed up if you didn't. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm kind of a bit lost here, Griff. All right. Think think position a little bit. Oh. You know, see. But we've already taken a corner. Yeah. Let's go. Um, did we take a safety? Well, dip- Mis- ah, well, so what we, yeah, no, we haven't, but. So, or, so James Williams, I think Williams is a safety. I don't think he's a linebacker. I think he plays too high for it. Um, it'd be cool if he went to a cover three team. He could maybe be the big nickel, but we've taken DeGene here. So, I don't well, know if we're. I don't think DeGene, obviously you want to play him a lot, but he's not a big nickel. You could still you could still find a way to get like more size on the field in a type of nickel package, but then also if you're gonna run dime, play guys like a weak linebacker, but he's more of like a safety type than a like what yeah. you supposedly were envisioning for Jamal Adams for ages, you know. Right. True, true, so, true. So do we like that idea? With with Williams, maybe, yeah, but then do we do we, do we want a pure safety as well though? Uh, I like Mustafa. I think we do. Okay, out of Wake Forest, what do we like about uh, Malik Mustafa? Um, he gets vertical and he hits. He can track ball carriers, and I and I think that translates to good coverage as well. Um, Maybe he takes angles really, required. Yeah, exactly. He's really explosive. He's just a ball ball player. Like he's really comfortable with like blockers around him and sifting through that. Um, I mean, he plays way bigger than 5'10". I mean, the fact that he's 2'10 at 5'10 speaks to like his density. Um, uh, He can move. He's fast. Um, In coverage, I didn't – it's a little bit – you're squinting a little bit because the way he's used, but like his hook his hook drops are good. Is it he's used quite a lot down in the box? Yeah, he's played in the box a lot in the seam. And also they use him – I didn't have tape, but they use him deep middle a little bit. Um, But the quarterbacks aren't targeting him, so I can't see what he's doing off screen. But if he's preventing targets, he's probably doing his job. Or at least if they're not targeting him. Yeah, he also had a 41.5-inch vertical jump, 10 for 8-inch broad, and a a 4.54-second 40 at 209 pounds, 5 for 10. So Yeah. No, he's a real player. So – I, I nice. don't know. What, what do you think hit. of him? Run yeah. and hit, get more physical. Now, it's funny because this would leave the defense with um, a collection of kind of down slash quarter safeties rather than the high guys, although it'd be interesting to see Mustafa play more in the post, as you said, it does exist. I like this. Chat, let us know what you think of these mock drafts and which one you're preferring so far. I hope there's some new names. Ugh. Should we take Christian Boyd here, Griff? 
Yeah, let's get a 300 pounder. Northern Iowa. 329 pounds. He's Most really tackle. he's really mobile. He has okay. an anchor and he's mobile, so excellent. Well, that's what we need. I think on our team it's important for the defense to have a big type of nose really especially if they're planning to use them two gapping a bit more yeah than last season right pick 192 in the sixth griff this think, is uh, the tip ryman territory again yeah what do you want to do instead who's there at receiver Fofoshio, we don't want to forget about him but we- Cornelius Johnson. That's a little interesting. It is, isn't it? I mean, they just don't... They just didn't throw the ball much, right? Right. But in terms of, as a prospect, the height, the weight, the speed, like, good blocker. Right. Should we should we make that a, a thing? Like just Let's get a, a chippy a chippy blocker, four 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 second forty, thirty seven and a half inch vert, six foot three, two hundred twelve. Are are you not drafting like a, a guy who's blocked by DK or is he more than that? Well remember they're trading DK. <laughs> oh yeah, no. that's right. I just think he's a good player and should be included in it. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Okay. Last pick. The seventh round pick. I don't even know any of these uh, these names, to be honest. Griff. Nathaniel, Nathaniel Watson is a guy that I watched. Oh, Gabriel Murphy. I would take oh, Murphy. Yeah, I, I, Murphy. Well, okay, tell me about Gabriel Murphy. Um, Out of UCLA, the edge. He 247. I don't know. He, he looks like he's 270. I don't, did he lose weight for the combine? I don't know. Um, he has – He he's a bigger edge, so he would let you be more stout when you go into four down nickel and early downs. Um, he can actually rush the pass for a little bit. Like He's like a strength finesse guy. So – he has a little bit of a bull rush, but he wants to like corner on guys. He wants to get uh, knocked down on the outside arm of the tackle and like bend it. Now he's not doing that. He's not crazy twitchy. He's not crazy powerful. He's not crazy, you know, technically oriented, but that's still his game. It's still his play style. And he's a good run defender. He actually gets pro- produ- He's been getting production for like three years straight now. Uh, I mean, I think he's good depth to have, and he kind of gives them a skill set they don't really have right now. They don't really have that 6'3-ish, 265-ish guy. And so in the seventh round, I'd take him all day. I think he probably goes in the fourth round anyway. Maybe the fifth. I so, kind of overlooked him because he had uh, 30 and a half inch long arms and was light at the combine, 247 pounds. But what you're saying is him probably playing heavier. And the fact he slimmed down, he had a 159 second 10-yard split and a 39 and a half inch vert. Just the arm length scary, but yeah, at that, this point I did. in the draft, like seventh round, just pick a good player, solid player who can contribute against the run. You think he might be a bit bigger, maybe he can be that. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, should we do that then? Let's do it. <laughs> right. So that's the second draft, guys. So, do you prefer draft A or draft B? Now we'll put out a graphic of each draft how are we feeling about this one i'll uh screenshot it in our trade down with the colts we uh the, the colts trade up for brock bowers after they traded with the the bucks uh and we got out of that cooper DeGene 
and uh, Cooper BB, double Coopers. Cooper DeGene, the corner out of Iowa. Cooper BB, the guard out of Kansas State. After which, we took Trevor Morris, linebacker out of Kentucky. Malik Mustafa, the safety out of Wake Forest. Christian Boyd, the defensive tackle out of Northern Iowa. Cornelius Johnson, wide receiver out of Michigan. Gabriel Murphy, edge from UCLA. And chat is pretty split, draft A, draft B. Now, like I said, we haven't done the obvious names. Griff is very, he's keen for this all to be super realistic. So, so there you go. <laughs> We've sat satisfied Griff. Now, let us know in the comments which one you prefer. I will, uh, hold on a second. What I could do, let me try and uh, do something for a second. Griff, your any closing thoughts while I get this up? Um, I'm not super into this draft, but I feel like it's a, it's a draft that still makes you better. Right. Just like last year, we were thinking about pass rusher at five and, you know, we mocked Devin to Seattle at five. That was like in our third mock that we did or something, I think. And we more so did, okay, if we don't take a pass rusher, what would the draft look like? And sure enough, we took corner, right? I feel like this is kind of the equivalent where corner isn't the most pressing thing on your mind but there's still room and if they can fit him in at nickel and and and, and <laughs> cycle him in witherspoon i mean we we did not think about witherspoon as a nickel maybe in man but not not the zone shit and he was really good at it so i don't know the gene would be interesting i like bb i'm i don't know about wallace i'll let the coaching staff see what they do with him and i'll be open-minded about it like the Mustafa pick, especially where he's taken. Same with Boyd. Cornelius Johnson's a fun flyer. Yeah. And and most importantly, Griff, we've taken this into a realistic fashion. Right. We've been realistic. My toe feels better. Yeah. Isn't that fun? Isn't it fun how, you know, you can have mock drafts. It's so exciting. What players can you get? But no, we're, we're realistic. Yeah, so all of ever. these players are going to be Seahawks. Yeah. Maddie, yeah. who's the number one player you want to be a Seahawk? Regardless of where they're taken, just the number one guy that's realistic. Sorry, chat. I thought I was showing you both. Um, let me, let me, let me ping that on the screen. Bang. All right. So let me, let me flip this around. And Griff, sorry, what was that question? Who is the one player you want to be a Seahawk come late April? And and let's assume they're taken where they should be taken. Ah. Uh, Michael Hall Jr. Okay. Nice. Yeah, let's let's just swing, you know, let's swing. Yep. I like it. Um, my answer is probably Junior Colson. They they need the mic. They the scheme needs the middle linebacker, and they're you just this draft, this draft just freaking sucks for linebacker. And yet when he was there at eighty three, Griff, you still suck firm. <laughs> it's realism, baby. I love that. All right. So, chat, even if – close your eyes and pretend, pretend Mims is like Fatanu. Yeah, but Griff, he's not. But pretend. That's realistic. If, if Mims is Fatanu, I would go with draft A. Yeah. I think also, I chat, remember a. that um, Griff's toes hurt. Yeah. So. <laughs> Cam. Thank you, Cam. Um. But all this is moot because they're trading DK to move into the top 10. Yeah, so. Sukman with an interesting question. Do you prefer Mims and Bullard or Dejean and BB? I think that's a really good way of putting it, Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, guard and safety, I think, makes more sense in yeah. general. So... I mean, again, swap out Mims for whoever you want. Yeah, but like Gr Griff's viewing Dejean as a corner, a cover corner, you know? Yeah. 
that's not really like, I know Dejean's listed as safety here, but right. Right. Should we get right. out of here? Hit Chat. it, Maddie. <laughs> no, I can't just hit it. Chat, like the video. Uh, comment what you think about these mock drafts. Tell people about the show, please. Uh, follow Griff on Twitter at CMike Spin Move. Follow me on Twitter at Mattia Frown. Follow the pod at Seattle Overload. Uh, thank you, Monjombo, for the birthday wish. I did see that. We'll be back with a normal schedule this coming week. We'll probably go Wednesday, Thursday, Griff. Yeah, probably. Yeah, Wednesday, Thursday. Henry, option C will come to those who wait. It will happen at some point. We'll do, we'll do more of these. Yeah, it's it's 4.40 a.m., so, you know. You're a madman. Madman. Hey, Monjombo. Monjombo with a comment. I rewatched the 2023 draft reaction. You guys were so much more optimistic and happy what the peatless environment does to you. I mean... Yeah, Pete, without Pete Carroll, there is a bit less optimism, but I think it was more speaks to the fact that the roster is so, like, it's light in a lot of areas in an unfamiliar way. A lot of people were unoptimistic for, before Pete Carroll and John Schneider built a Super Bowl team, so. I'm, my, if, I mean, I'm generally optimistic because I think McDonald's a really good coach and it was a good hire. Mm -hmm. My optimism is more so related to just the roster at the moment. Yeah, that's exactly at least for, for this year because I thought that they had pieces. Yeah, that would that McDonald could have done serious damage with, like yeah. really, you know. But and I have I have a a bit of caution on how difficult the task is for McDonald, given it's very different being a head coach to a play caller, and he's got a ton on his plate. Like this isn't. It feels to me like his position has grown more difficult than when he first took over like what it looked like so interested to see how it shakes out obviously there's a whole draft and off season to go as well so there you go. right true that right we'll be back wednesday drift closing wisdom um Dude, I'm gonna. I really want to see the Bobcat again on camera. Um, that was cool. He just walked.